back to the second part where we are going to go into the workflow. So the only thing I did between this video and the last video, part one, is all I did was flat my image to bring the group and the background all together. So only thing different is I flattened the image. So um, this will go ahead and we'll go a little bit quicker just because we are, um, we got the big part done, you know, just pretty much the retouch it takes a while, um, especially if you're more detail oriented. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, I've really been loving the emotional color base. And like I said before in my prior tutorial, this one kind of takes a while for my computer to load. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load it. Um, the other photo, I did end up putting a Gaussian blur around uh, my subject just to create more of a blur, but we won't go into that because I don't want this tutorial to take up people's too much time. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that for another tutorial where it will actually make a really big difference because like I said before, I've shot, this is shot with my 70 to 200 um, Tamron and I shot at 195 millimeter. So the bokeh I have going on is pretty fantastic. Um, so you don't need to add more bokeh, but I I sometimes really like the way that it looks, but um, it's not really needed. So um, go ahead and let that load. And my computers, I've only had this since May and it's really only this color base and then a couple of the other color bases that really slow down my computer. I don't know why. And then also applying like a blur. So, um, love this color base. It's so beautiful. Still kind of thingy. Okay. So the only thing that sometimes I have issues with is with bokeh as you get that banding in the background. I know that um, somebody on the group has suggested using some type of, I'm not sure what they what they use, but um, it's not really noticeable too much in the final image than it is in this right now. So, and as you can see, you can see it's a lot more blurred in this image. Okay. So we're going to go with that, and as you can see, by clicking on the eyeball, or sorry, clicking off the eyeball, you can see what it looks like when the action is not applied. And then we click the eyeball back on, and it just makes everything more deeper, brings a light to the center that I really like. So the first action that I used is the um, Amelia Bedelia. I really like that um, action name. And we're going to go click that one. And going through it, I originally lowered the opacity of this layer, and then I ended up going back because I loved how rich and warm the tones created. Um, and as you can see, same light effect on her. So it just adds m even more light and really the color tones in the background, more yellowy, goldeny, beautiful. And so I don't, I left it at 70. Actually, you know, I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little, just a skosh. And even then, right there, I could probably call it a day and be happy. Um, but we're going to keep going on and some more stuff. So the next one I used was a newfound favorite, um, the Hecate Peg. I really, I love the color tones in the background, but I've shot Aubrey before and in the back was like a pink reddish bush and I kind of wanted like a, a, a tone in the background that wasn't just green or yellow or brown. I kind of wanted um, like a purple or a rose or a red. So what I'm going to do is play the Hecate, Pecate, <laughs> Hecate Peg, apologize. And that just creates like some really pretty like blue purple tones. I mean, it's, it's quite stunning. So what I did, because um, I really do like this background, um, when it's done for the background, um, but I'm going to remove it off her skin because I don't want that blue contrast under her skin. I want, I want that warm, 
uh, hue that the Amelia had put on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush off her skin. So I'm going to come over to the left hand side of my tool palette. I'm going to click on the blush brush tool. <laughs> and so you see how the box is white? That whole action was applied to the entire image. Now remember uh, when we were retouching the box would be black. That's something that we're going to paint onto the image. So it's not applied until you paint it on. When the mask is white, it's applied to the whole entire image and we use the black to remove it. So we're going to come closer to her face and we're going to, um, since our box is white, it's applied to our whole image, we're going to uh, go to a black brush and I'm just going to drop the opacity down to maybe about 46 just because I don't want it to be too stark in contrast between her and the background. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to um, start coloring with the black. I'm going to use my um, backslash so I can see where I'm painting on my um, action. And remember, if you lift up your brush and you go over that same section, it will be at a higher opacity than if you were to just keep your, holding your brush down. So you see how I already went over that? If I hold my brush down, that's at a higher opacity. So because I'm at 46%. So I'm just gonna continue. I tr It's very sloppy when I'm doing now, yes, but um, like I said, when you're working on clients, it it comes to taste, you know. So I'll kind of get around the hair. I mean, we won't go too crazy. Um, but we want it to blend nicely. So, okay. Then we'll hit that backslash again. All right, that looks much better. So this is without the Hecate peg on, and this is with it on. Removed off of our subject. So we're getting we're getting pretty close to the um, actual final end. So the next action that we're gonna run will be Paddington. And again, I just wanted some more blues in there, just to bring out some more color. So this time I'm going to completely remove this off of my subject just because this is so, this is pretty, pretty darn blue. So it creates a definite cool tone um, against her, her skin. So we're going to increase our brush size. Or sorry, we're gonna increase the opacity. Also increase my brush size and we're going to Remove it off of her boobs. Sometimes if you hit the backslash, it moves it to the white brush. I'm not sure why it does that, but it does. So I don't want to go too far out the hairline because sometimes you might get a halo effect. So just enough where it blends and you don't get that white haloing effect because it's not on the subject. So and then I always just kind of go around like that. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but you see how that's lighter. I'll just brush that on her hair. There we go. And I'm gonna decrease Paddington because it is so blue. I love the kind of rich tones that it gives in there. So um, the next action we're going to run is we're going to, and it's, this is all in the innocence workflow. We're going to go down to where our contrast is. So the contrast I'm going to choose is contrast bright. I'm going to play that action. And again, um, 
going to remove this off my subject. It's a little too intense on her. Um, like I said, like when we're doing retouching, uh, you might want to add contrast to the hair, just add some more depth, but to the whole entire image, it's just too much for her skin. So we're going to remember white box, black, because we're going to brush all this off. Okay. Use my little backslash. 100% opacity. And just remove off our subject. Okay. You can still tell, see the banding, but it's kind of not as intense um, as it was before. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my vignette. We're gonna choose Butternut. That's just gonna darken the edges. There we go, creating a really pretty vignette. Um, again, I'm going to remove this off my subject because it's come up onto her back and so I'm just gonna remove it because I don't really want it on her clothes. It alters the skin tone just a little bit. So we're just gonna come and remove this a little bit there. Just like that. And again, I'm not being as precise as I usually would be. Um, just like I said, for the sake of the tutorial. Okay. So the next thing we're going to come do is we're going to come up to the soft pearl. I love the soft matte pearl. It's amazing. And we're going to, again, decrease the opacity on the layer. And I'm going to brush it off my subject. The mat you kind of have to be careful with if you um, have a matte background and you want your client completely not matte. There's a, if you can tell, a huge difference. Um, sometimes if you look down by like here, you can see a huge difference where, where the mat is and where the actual action is. So I'm just gonna put that and it creates a really cool effect. Just like that. Let's see if I kind of missed him over there. Oops. Okay. There we go. I'm going to decrease the matte effect just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and because I love adding lovely sunbursts, we're going to go to the Three Nails collection in the workflow um, to where it says movable sunlight. I'm going to do the golden sunset first, just because I, I like to layer my... Um, my sunburst, it, to me, creating more of a gradient, it just looks, to me, more um, natural. So make sure you keep your gradient box open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way up because I don't need the ball of light. It just looks unnatural. But I kind of want this to stretch all the way like I did in the original one. So I'm going to kind of stretch it just a little bit more and bring it up. So stretch and bring it up because I want it to really fade nicely, just like that. Because our original one has that nice little effect as well. So just like that. And then I'm going to add the sheer back, oh sorry, the blinding fire on top. Just to have that nice little gradient. Toolbox open. Up. This one I'm going to decrease just a little bit. Just like decrease the size. There we go. And then I'm just going to decrease the opacity on both these layers. Just 
like that. Okay, so here is the original that I had put on the Greater Than Gatsby website. And then here is um, the one I created for you guys. As you can tell, with that gauzy and blur, definitely created a, a more beautiful background that people usually try and go for. Um, there is an action. Is it in the Radiance collection? Let's see. Let's see for you guys. Um, where it's called Silky Boca. Silky Creamy Boca. Find that real quick and then we'll call it a day. Um, where are we? Is it in the Innocence collection? <laughs> It'd be really funny if it is. <laughs> yeah, so you're in luck. So, um, Usually what I'll do is like silky rich bokeh. I like the way that the um, gauzy and blur does, but you can achieve the same effect. And then here you just take it off your patient. So yeah, silky rich bokeh. This one you have to be really careful with to create some really really nice haloing so don't know why I did that sorry so just be aware it will flatten your image um, I was like wow it was already blurred so nicely blurred because I was on the wrong one so apologize for that I don't want to waste your guys's time but um, instead of doing like a Gaussian blur where you use the magic glass, the magic tool, the quick selection tool, um, and select everything, Gaussian blur, and then this is just a quicker fix. So this is going to flatten your image, and then you can run that. And then you just take your brush, and just 100% opacity, this one you have to be really careful with. You can get some haloing, especially because of her hair. Um, we can do that. Decrease the opacity. And then delete that layer. <laughs> so, pretty much look dead on. Gaussian blur does a little bit better with the blurring, but I feel like that looks pretty good. So, all right, guys, if you have any questions, please leave me some comments down below, and I will try and answer them as quick as I can, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Bye.